Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. While I'm not a big fan of just outright blocking access from certain countries, it can be quite useful in order to enrich your logs with geolocation information. Xavier has a little Python script for you to quickly look up the the geographic location of an IP address or a host name. Now, typically you would use one of the standard geolocation databases for this. MaxMind probably is the biggest one providing these databases for download, either free or commercial. But uh, what Xavier points out is that you can also add your own information to these databases. This is in particular helpful in order to, for example, attribute access requests to particular branch offices or so in your organization. So for IP addresses that you use internally, of course, you should be able to define the geographic location very precisely and assign it to specific locations like branch offices. And if you're using the popular Typo3 content management system, it's time to patch. The Typo team did release updates for all three current versions. That's version 7, 8, and 9. And the new release fixes four vulnerabilities. The first one is an authentication bypass vulnerability. Depends somewhat on the exact configuration on the system. Then there is a SQL injection vulnerability and two deserialization vulnerabilities that may lead to remote code execution. So certainly patch it, even though how vulnerable you are to these particular issues depends somewhat on your system configuration. Also read the advisory in addition to just patching because there are a couple configuration options that you can select in PHP to make exploitation more difficult or impossible in some cases. So at the very least follow that guidance and even if you do patch still apply these configuration changes just in case there are other similar vulnerabilities still stuck in the system. Now one thread I've talked uh, quite a bit about in the past when it comes to open source software is the use of insecure dependencies where you are including libraries in your own software, but those libraries themselves are insecure and by using them, you are actually now exposing your code to the same vulnerabilities. GitHub hosting so many open source projects has announced for a while now that they're going to to help developers identify these dependencies and vulnerabilities. They have done so for Ruby and JavaScript for a while, but now they expanded this, soft, this service to Python. Python, of course, is super popular these days, so really great that GitHub does expand to this language. Now, if you are like me, still stuck a little bit in the good old Perl world, well, uh, Perl actually has of its own solution for that via CPAN alerting you of dependency issues like this. Now, if you are using GitHub and if you are hosting projects with GitHub that either use Python, Ruby, or JavaScript, then double check your notification settings to make sure that you will receive appropriate alerts in the form that you are able to accept them. And sometimes the bad guys mess up too. So researchers at Chrome Tech uh, were able to gain access to a Mongo database that was not password protected and exposed to the internet that apparently was used by criminals who used online games for money laundry. What they did was that they set up Apple ID accounts using fake credentials and then associated stolen credit cards with these accounts. Apparently, Apple actually doesn't verify a lot of the details and just charges and then refunds a dollar to the credit card in order to verify that the credit card itself is valid. These credit cards and Apple accounts were then used to buy goods in various online games and then resell them to other users, which in turn netted the criminals real money that they were able to spend. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the 
ethical and legal implications of Chrome Tech connecting to that database, but they have notified law enforcement as soon as they came across this. Also, they notified some of the vendors of the games involved as well as Apple. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.